Hi, welcome back. It's uh, John Effridge, a cycling artist again. Um, now this is going to be part three of the renovation of this, um, I think it's the Lloyd Loom chair. Um, if you saw it in the original uh, YouTube videos, you'll notice that we've now painted it lovely pink. Now there are a couple of spots that have been difficult to adhere to. Now that might be because there was a nicotine um, film on this, which I had to eradicate and what have you. So what I'm doing is I've, I've actually um, done this project um, with the help of Sarah Jane Chalk Paints. Now I've had these lovely pink colours given to me by them and um, I've used them to, as you can see, paint the whole thing. Two different shades of pink. Um, as you can see they're wonderful pastel colours. Um, most of uh, Sarah Jane's chalk paints are a pastel colour. Um, having said that there are a few um, slightly brighter ones and, and, and I have to say I, I'm excited at using all of them at some point or other. Um, at the moment I'm now looking into buying at least another five full tins of this stuff for different projects and different looks that I want to achieve. Um, now what I did was, um, I think I probably showed you in the other videos, is that I actually for this particular project, although you don't generally need to do it for a nice wooden project, but this is a, a bit of a different material, it had a bit of a nicotine stain to it, and um, I did uh, an, an undercoat, or a primer I should say, um, just to get rid of that stain and um, bring it up to a brand new, well not a brand new chair, but uh, something that was brand new in, in effect of the way that I'm now going going to be presenting it. Um, now I may have missed just a couple of pieces and I'm just going to touch them up as and when I go. And what I did was I put a couple of layers, uh, probably three I think in the end of the Sarah Jane chalk paints and I actually went round the, the beading and I also did at least two or three on onto the uh, seat legs. And I've used the um, Sarah Jane waxes. Uh, this is the dark wax, but um, I used the clear wax for this because I thought to myself that probably the wax was a bit more forgiving in, in the way of the movement of the chair because this is a chair that can move. Um, and if you put varnish on, I, I thought maybe that might um, crack because it is a, a really good finish with the varnish. So what I've done is I've, I've clear waxed the seat. I've done three coats, two or three coats. Um, I've painted it with a Sarah Jane chalk paint and then I've put at least two or three wax sealers on it and uh, as you can see it's, it's come up tremendous. I mean you can polish the wax sealer, um, I don't want it to be too shiny, uh, there's a nice bit of a sheen to it, a bit of a satin sheen to it I should say. Um, so yeah that's, that's what I've done with that and on the legs um, I've used Sarah Jane chalk paint again um, I've painted three of them uh, the darker pink to match the braiding and as you can see on one leg I've done a green colour. Um, now they're all Sarah Jane, Jane chalk paints. Um, the, the legs were pretty simple to do. No priming, no undercoating, no rubbing down, straight on. And uh, the way I achieved um, a smoother texture with Sarah Jane chalk paint was that I mixed a little piece of water um, one tablespoon at each session that I did and mixed it in and that made it a bit more um, uh, looser for me to, to be able to paint with and then for the finishing touch I turned the um, uh, the, the leg covers I think you're called they're metal and I got some silver hammerite and I sprayed them from gold to silver just to make it all match lovely. Now what I'm going to do now, um, that's basically all the chalk painting done apart from the little touch up areas that I will do that may be my fault, fault because I've actually had it in my living room. Um, it may be that uh, the cats and dogs may have knocked up against it, I'm not really sure. Um, but I just need to touch up a few, few pieces, Sarah Jane chalk painting, just touch in there, just cover it over. Done, sorted, no problems whatsoever. Um, yeah, I'm thrilled to bits with the Sarah Jane chalk paint and for most of the project I used this brush, um, Sarah Jane chalk paints, they sell these brushes. 
I fully recommend you get these brushes. Um, I did try one time to use um, a gesso brush and all, although it was a good brush for doing my gesso work, I found for chalk painting it was a bit inferior. So a normal emulsion brush I think isn't really going to cut the mustard for it. So really the round ones are fantastic. I mean for, for going into here and filling in, filling in all the nooks and crannies, absolutely brilliant. Um, so a conjunction of Sarah Jane chalk paints, Sarah Jane chalk paints brushes, this job's been, um, I wouldn't say easy, but that's because of the nature of the product. Um, but in theory, really easy because it's just put it on, you know. So that's the beauty of Sarah Jane chalk paints and waxes and varnishes. Um, now, what I'm about to do is look at uh, the fabrics. Now, as I said in, in part one, I'm going to do the seat cushion with a fabric printed from my original artwork. Now the place I get this fabric from is called Printfab and uh, I have to say oh, absolutely out of this world that I found Sarah Jane chalk paints and Printfab. Um, Printfab have just changed what I can do with furniture. I can now get bespoke products. I can get it in numerous different types of fabric. Um, I'm not sure really how many, I, I, I haven't counted, but I'm imagining at least between 12 and 20 different types of, of fabric I can get. And uh, the one I've used for this particular project is a cotton drill. In a second, I'm gonna remove my chair and um, I'm gonna show you how I go about renovating the seat with the Printfab fabric. Um, what a few things I've got to say about Printfab is that you will see, you will definitely see, the fabric is brilliant. The print is absolutely out of this world. What can I say? That I can It's for a reproduction on fabric. You are not going to get better than Printfab. They are superb. And um, the customer service from Pinfab is brilliant. Um, I have been lucky enough that I've approached them, said that I, I need some backing um, filler in for, the, for, for some of the images I've done. And they've produced that for me. That didn't take them many minutes. They can do that. I, I'm not expert enough to do that. So they, they've, the, the customer service is, well, fantastic. And... Um, They've helped me out no end. And, uh, you know, a conjunction of the, like I say, Sarah Jane chalk paints, print fab fabric. The service I get from both of them companies, um, I'm, I'm not trying to sell you stuff from them. I'm just telling you my experience. My experience is top notch. Sorry, top notch. <laughs> changed my life. Changed things I can do. I can now produce fantastic quality furniture with my artwork. Now I had gone down the route originally of, of um, trying to find a cushion I could get printed out, uh, maybe using that. Um, I'd gone down the route of doing original artwork on, on, on um, furniture and I will still be doing that and decoupage from canvases I make. But I have to say in 100% all honesty since I found Sarah Jane chalk paints and since I found Printfab fabric, absolutely out of this world. Anyway, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to stop rambling on. I'm going to show you what I've done. I've done a little bit of preparation, not too much, but uh, just to get us a little bit of ahead of the game um, so that I can show you the fabric and, and how I'm going to put their fabric onto the, onto the seat cushion. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of the chair and I'll be with you in just a second. So I'm just going to put this down here. All right. Um, I don't want to say this, but here's one I prepared earlier. Uh, right. This is going to be my cushion. Right. Now, 
in this particular case, what I've done is I've left, because it's such a vintage chair, I've left the original fabric underneath. Um, there's no harm to it. It's all, all in good condition. Um, so I've, I've basically covered over the top and I've put a, a fire layer on this now. So I've covered it over. So um, not only do I um, still have the original integrity of the chair, I have everything in place. All I have to do now is to refabric it. I've got a fire retardant layer on here now. Um, I spent a little time doing that just before we, I came on camera. Um, use plenty of staples. I've stapled it around. I've got a little bit of um, fabric there I've just, to just snip off. Now, one thing I will say is make sure you have enough fabric. You'll notice on this edge that I've kind of got a little bit short. I thought I had enough fabric, and, and yes, I do, but only just. So please, when you stretch this over and you measure it out, please go quite a way beyond and cut what you don't need off afterwards. Otherwise, you could end up too short and um, you're going to be kicking yourself because you'll always have a good bit of fabric. But anyway, there's the fire retardant labour. Now I'm going to talk to you about the print fab fabric. Now, this is one of three images I got and um, they sell them, I think the, the width for the roll is 1 meter 40 don't quote me on that. And you buy it by the meter and uh, I have to say the, the cost in itself is, is fantastic. But this is the piece that I'm going to use for this. This is half of what I've just um, bought and uh, I should say that's a little bit over a meter but um, that's half of the width. Now look, look at the quality of that. Now that is going to be absolutely awesome on this chair. Now, like I said, make sure you cut enough. You want to do some measurements and uh, Printfab will probably help you out with that. I mean, they've been really helpful to me. And um, do some measurements on, on the chair seat that you've got. Measure the, where you want the picture to be, the size you want it to be. You go online. Um, to prefab and um, there's a, an online tool there where you can just add the picture on and you can adjust it to the size you want you can adjust it to different um, I, I don't know what you call them modules I suppose you'd call them where you can I, I've just put these on as they are in a block because I don't need anything more than that but other ones I've actually reversed the image so I could have had that little girl facing that little girl. I could have had them off centre. Um, all sorts. Um, I'm pretty sure um, that Printfab may even separate this up for me if I want to one time and actually put a back filler colour on for me from this. They've done it on um, for me so I could actually get some placemats done, which was absolutely... I mean, look at that. They don't have to do that for me, but they did. Now, like I said... Have a good measurement and uh, what you want to do is find the centre of where you want that picture to be. Now I want the main picture to be the main part of this. So I'm going to end up with pictures outside of that picture if that makes sense. And uh, I need to sort of kind of work out where it is. And what I'm going to do now is just get a tape measure and... Uh, when I've unknotted it, of course. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my glasses on and I'm going to measure around the outside. So all I can do is get this square picture into the centre, because at the moment you can see it's a little bit over to one side. Now one thing I will say is that Printfab's fabric is not actually fire retardant. Um, you can buy sprays and all that sort of stuff. Um, in this particular instance, I don't need it so because I've put a fire retardant barrier underneath. Um, so that's really all you need for this. Um, so I'm just measuring around here. And I've got about 21, we'll say 22 inches, right? And... My image is 9, so that leaves me 11 inches. So it means I need 5.5 inches. So that's the 11 inches divided by 2. I need 
five and a half inches either side. So I can already see five and a half inches is there, so I need to come over just a little bit. So I'm going to pull that over like this. Now this is um, quite a paramount job um, because in this particular case, because I have square edges to the, the portrait, um, so to speak, I've got to try to make sure that they keep straight. Now, like I said, I'm sure you can approach Perinfab and they could sort of separate these pictures up for you. Um, I'm not promising that. That's not my place to say that that's okay. But I do know that their customer service is is absolutely for top notch and first class. Um, speak to a guy called Harry or Ollie. Um, yeah, I, I can't say uh, enough about them. They've been brilliant. Right. Okay. So I've kind of got that. I need to actually straighten this up at the moment. Right, it does take a little bit of fiddling about, and sorry, you'll, um, if you can just bear with me on this. So I'm going to try and get this where I want it. I want it a bit further down, otherwise I'm going to lose the picture over the back. So it's just a kind of bit of adjustment. Um, the two quality um, fabrics against each other, they they don't just slide. They you know they 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 make it so that you have to actually do something and uh, I like that feeling. I mean this is lovely and thick this, so I'm not sure what the GSM of it is, but it's absolutely great. Right, okay you can see I've got more than enough fabric. Um, in this particular case it doesn't matter that I've cut way too much um, because there's really not going to be anything else I can use them for, um, so I need to cut as much as I need. Um, it would have all just gone to waste anyway, so I'm just going to measure around here and uh, 21 inches. Right, so I've got to make sure I've got this in the middle. Right, let's have a look here. We've got five inches there, and we've got five inches there. I'm happy with that, I think that's enough. Right, now, you can already see, hopefully, just the quality that this is oozing. This fabric is absolutely superb. Now, I need to get my stapler. All I really need for this is a stapler and a pair of scissors, and um, we can go ahead from there. I've got a bit of a bad hand. I've just had a carpal tunnel um, injury, so and, and my stapler is actually quite a stiff one to do. I've got adjustments on it. Um, but because I want to put as much force as I can into the staples, um, I've got it on the highest setting. So if you see me struggle a little bit on that, that might just be because of that. Right, I've got all the lines straight. There's no wonks going on in here. And uh, yeah, I think we're ready to start stapling. Now, what I do is I staple four medium, uh, middle pieces rather. To me, that will hold it together. It will keep it where I need it to be, and then all the rest I can just pull over and 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 adjust as I need to. But the the hardest part is keeping these straight lines straight. So what I'm going to do now is to turn it over, find where I need to staple it, which is there. I'm going to put one tacking staple in there. Right, I'm just going to pull that gently tight and put a tacking staple in there. Done. The good thing is, if you do get it wrong, there's a tool like this um, it's for pulling sta staples and, and tacks. Peanuts on, on eBay or somewhere like that. So um, you can get one of them and can just get that in there and get out of it if, if it's wrong. Okay, so I've just done that one. I'll then go to the opposite side and uh, with my fabric facing me, I should say my print fab fabric facing me because uh, that's what it is, I'll just pull that taut. I won't pull it too tight because what I'll be doing is pulling the, 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 the um, straight edges and causing a bit of contortion and we don't want that. Right, that's all nice and tight. As tight as it needs to be anyway. 
and I'll come round here and I'll put another tack in stapling. Right, I'm just going to pull that taut on the edge and put a tack in stapling. There we go. Right, now I'm also going to do that on these edges. Right, if you look here, when I said you need plenty of fabric over the edges, look, that, there's not that much left there, is there? Now, um, the good thing about print fab is they do have this uh, running edge. They, I think they call that a salvage edge. I used to work in the shoe trade and I used to work with uh, lots of fabrics. So I know a bit about fabrics, actually. So um, that tells me that this is, this is good fabric, I can tell you, because, uh, like I say, I know a bit about it. Um, one thing I will be doing with print fab fabrics, um, when I can get to the point of um, knowing the measurements that I want and um, the way that I want to do it and the pictures that I want, I'm going to actually be buying some more of this cotton drill or maybe even if there is a, a stiffer fabric, um, I think there might be one, but it might be that I need the cotton drill. And I'm actually going to make... Um, bespoke shoes. Uh, the, the place I used to work for, they make bespoke shoes. Um, they're kind of a hybrid between slippers and shoes, uh, like a hard bottom slipper. And um, they are bought all over the world. They are bought by presidents, film stars, prime ministers, you name it, they are bought. Uh, I've seen them on telly a few times. Uh, Johnny Depp, I know for a fact, has a pair. And I'm going to be making my own from my own bespoke fabric. And uh, if I can get into the right market, I wouldn't be surprised if they went really well, because they'd be very unusual. Um, so anyway, there's another tacky place. Now, you just turn it around, and as you can see, the inside fabric is so nice and strong. Look at that. That is going to be the front of my uh, cushion. Now what I need to do is to go round these edges now. And everywhere I do attack, I need to do attack the opposite side. That's the way I do it. This is a little bit unusual because it has this curved edge. So that's going to have to be pulled round there. But uh, we'll get round to that when we, when we do. So what I need to do now is to just go... I'll go on to this corner. So I know I'll go 